Welcome to worship in the name of Christ. It is good to be with all of you gathered by the Holy Spirit on this first Sunday of Advent. And a special welcome goes out to all of you who are visitors and newcomers in our midst. We're glad that you've joined us. And a gift to, of being on Zoom is that we have people joining us from all over the country and even from all over the world. So we're so glad that we're all gathered here together by the Spirit. And Advent is a time of waiting and longing for God's reign of love and mercy to come in full. And each Sunday when we gather for worship, we will begin our worship by lighting an Advent wreath. And you're welcome to join in that ritual from your home. If you have an Advent wreath, you can bring it close to the screen to light along with us. If you don't have a wreath, any candle will do. So you can take a moment right now to gather your things if you would like to join in that ritual with us from your home. We also will share in Holy Communion together as a community today. So. You can gather your bread and wine, your crackers and juice, or whatever you have on hand to share in our holy meal. We have a couple of additions to our prayers this morning. 
Paul Rogers' sister, Edith, died this last week, and she was 87 years old. So we will hold Paul and Cam and their whole family in our prayers during this time of grief. We also add Cindy Devereaux's friend, Ron Kopeska, to our prayers. Um, Ron is in rehab after back surgery, and he also has just tested positive for COVID-19. So we ask that God's healing would be close with Ron during this time. And now we continue with our lighting of the Advent wreath. We'll hear Kathleen sing some new words to an ancient Advent tune. We'll join in with her and then we will light our candles together. Like the first candle of Advent, we kindle it with hope. We long for you to come to our world, to break through and reign with compassion, justice, and peace. Mighty God, creator of the world, break through all that keeps us from you. We ask for your mercy that you would reform us in your image. Amen. Awake, 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 awake and greet. 
The grace of our Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sin and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, mother of us all, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God beside you, any God who works for those who wait. You meet those who gladly do right and those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls your name or attempts to take hold of you for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, oh God, you are our Abba. We are the clay and you are our potter. We are the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O God, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are your people. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.
reading from 1 Corinthians. Grace to you and peace from Abba God and the Savior Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given in you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in Christ, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Savior, Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Savior, Jesus Christ. God is faithful, by whom you were called into the communion of God's beloved Jesus Christ. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O God. Jesus said, in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Then the Son of Man will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gate. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the sun, but only Abba God. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like someone going on a journey who leaving home and putting the slaves in charge of their own work commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come in the evening or at midnight or at cock crow or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all. Keep awake. This is the good news. Praise to you, O Christ. I'd like to gather the children close so that I come on up close to your screen so that I can see you. Great, I can see a few. Come on up close. So we start a new church year today. And we begin the year with the season called Advent. And the word Advent means to wait, to wait. So we begin the year by waiting. But you know what? I feel like I've been waiting for a really long time. How about you? Raise your hands if you've been feeling like you've been waiting and waiting and waiting. So many things we've been waiting for. Can you unmute for a second to tell me what you've been waiting for? Sorry. I'm waiting for Christmas. Waiting for Christmas? What else? Waiting for Christmas. 
What else have you been waiting for? I've been waiting for our advent calendars because there's um, puzzles and other things. And advent. I've been waiting a couple years to get a mohawk. Oh my goodness, so much waiting, so much waiting. But you know what? One of the things that I have really been waiting for is when we can all come back to church together. I'm waiting for these yucky germs to go away and for us to be safe um, so that we can all come back to church together. Rachel, it looks like you have something you want to say that you've been waiting for, but I think your mom has to unmute you. Um, waiting for the new year. Waiting for the new year? Yeah. Okay, great. So there's all kinds of things that we wait for. And in the season of Advent, we wait together and we keep track of the time that we're waiting by using an Advent wreath. Can you see my Advent wreath? I wonder if you can see it. Okay, good, good. So each Sunday in Advent, we light one candle to help us count the time until Jesus comes again. And you know what? You see one of my candles is burning already? When Pastor Martha, who is at church, lit her candle for all of us, on the big wreath at church, I lit the candle in my own house so that I could keep count of the candles and keep count of the week until Jesus comes again. And you know what? Even though we're waiting and waiting and waiting, we are not waiting all by ourselves. When we light the candles in our own homes and we light the candles that are in the church, we remember that we are waiting all together and that God is with us in our waiting. So even though it's hard to be apart and we long for the day when we can be back together again, there will come a time when we'll be back together at church and I'll be able to see your faces and hear your voices without you having to unmute your screens and we'll all be together. But in the meantime, we do not wait alone. So I hope you can mark the, mark the time of these weeks by lighting the candles in your own home as we watch and wait together. Please pray with me. Dear God, Dear God, we thank you for this new church year. We thank you for this new church year. Help us in our waiting. Help us in our waiting. And remind us that we do not wait alone. Remind us that we do not wait alone. So in Pastor Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you so much for coming up and spending a little time with me. It's good to be with you. And now, dear friends, grace to you in peace from Abba God and the Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Advent begins with lament. Hear me again. Advent begins with lament. The prophet Isaiah cries out with, with an anguish that easily matches our own, don't you think? Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, comes the cry. All is not right with the world, with your people, with your good creation, oh God. And we need you. The season of Advent, the beginning of the church year, begins not with Happy New Year or songs of joy, not with celebration or good cheer, but with heartfelt longing and deep honesty. And friends, this is always the case. Advent begins with lament. I find myself puzzled each year during this season when Christian churches begin to advertise blue Christmas services. The idea is, I know, that for many people, the holidays are not the happiest time of the year. And I truly acknowledge that many are suffering from grief and loss, from illness, and troubling diagnoses from broken relationships and challenging economics, and that each of these challenges feel compounded in this season. 
But what puzzles me is that Advent always begins with lament. Contrary to the commercial excess and artificial joy that's advertised, yep, even in this COVID year, the church begins on another note. We begin with telling the truth about the state of the world, the state of our lives, the state of our bodies and our relationships. We begin with lament because we know our deep need for God to come into the, into the world and save us. And we wait. In Advent, the whole season is blue. Isaiah longs for God to tear open the heavens to display mighty power as the Israelites have witnessed in their past. They remember God's power that brought them out of slavery in the land of Egypt. They remember the manna in the wilderness received from God's own hand that, is, that sustained them on their journey to freedom. The awesome deeds that they did not expect. The people have returned from exile, but all is not as wonderful as they had imagined. They wonder at God's absence, God's silence. They've witnessed God's saving power before, and they long for such revelation again. In this new church year, we begin not only with lament, but also with a new gospel account. Turning to the gospel according to Mark, you may recall that the heavens are torn apart at Jesus' baptism, and the Holy Spirit descends like a dove on him. But we don't start there on this first Sunday of Advent. We begin, rather, with Jesus' declaration of apocalypse, the sun darkened, the moon giving no light, the stars falling from the skies, and the powers in the heavens shaken. Advent begins with lament. And it also begins with apocalypse, because apocalypse means revealing. Our season of watching and waiting, of longing and anticipation, holds meaning for us specifically because it begins with lament and apocalypse. It's been a challenging year. The coronavirus pandemic has swept around the world with breathtaking speed and destruction. Nearly one and a half million people have died. Economies have been shut down, jobs lost, basic necessities have become scarce. Medical personnel are exhausted and public health professionals warn that we are not yet through the worst of it. Social unrest unleashed by the murder of George Floyd at the hands of Minneapolis police also found expression across the globe. Racial inequities too long ignored by those with the most power can no longer be denied. And cries of Black Lives Matter, Native Lives Matter, Trans Lives Matter, and more come loud and clear from those who have been pushed to the margins of society. The rise of strongman leaders, another global threat, seeks to silence those who have just found their voices and the tension is palpable. A divisive election season in our country made space for false claims of voter fraud and delayed the peaceful transfer of power that is the bedrock of US democracy. Above it all, rages, fires, and record-breaking storms have wrought destruction on already devastated lands. Refugees flee famine and war and find shockingly little welcome or help wherever they go. This is the suffering to which we are all party, that all of us are sharing as we lament. And I barely brushed upon the more personal heartaches and tragedies. You know them yourselves. Beloved elders are taken too soon by COVID-19. Cancer of all kinds strikes those we know and love. Death comes unexpectedly. 
family family relationships are broken, careers are devastated, children are anxious, not able to go to school or play with their friends. Parents are overloaded. Grandparents are missing major milestones and events. All of us are lonely. We rightly begin Advent with lament. We honestly recognize our longing for God's presence to be made known because our desperate need is clearly revealed. And in the midst of apocalyptic threats and powerful warnings, Jesus says, learn from the fig tree. In the same way that you anticipate the coming of summer when leaves begin to sprout, so we will glimpse the coming of God's saving grace when all these disasters take place. Exactly when we most clearly see our deep need, at precisely that time, we begin to see the dawn of hope. You see, we know the story. Time and again, God heard the cries of the people and responded to their pain. Throughout the Hebrew Bible, we hear story after story of God's redeeming presence. When God's people turn away to follow their own desires, God allows them to experience the consequences. And yet, God always shows up. That is what we give witness to in this Advent season of waiting. We dare to tell the truth about our suffering and our fear, trusting that eventually we will see God with us. We ground our hope in the birth of the baby Jesus some 2,000 years ago. The eternal word of God took on human flesh and blood and entered human history as one of us. In that act of self-giving love, the barrier between heaven and earth was forever torn apart. God has indeed torn open the heavens and come to save us from ourselves. God is with us. It requires paying attention, but we do see glimpses of God's presence in us, with us, and among us. Maybe as small as a branch putting forth a tiny leaf, we see ordinary people extending themselves for the sake of others. In the midst of economic instability, Minnesota's Give to the Max Day received record donations. While church buildings are closed to protect public health, church members reach out to each other to extend friendship and to keep in touch. Volunteers deliver books both food and faith food to those with less mobility. And though we can't be together in three dimensions, faithful people like you continue worshiping together in virtual ways and continue sustaining the ministry of the church with financial contributions. We advocate for justice by making phone calls instead of office visits. We long to be together so we do the work to sustain the community we love for when we are able to come back together. And we do all of this because as we do, we glimpse the presence of God with us. Advent begins with lament, my friends, because we trust Emmanuel to actually hear us. And that is the hope we proclaim into this broken and suffering world. Amen.
quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. Please free your hands and your voices for prayer as we remain muted. Oh God, hear us. Hear our prayer. oppression and hatred.
We pray for those in our community in need of healing. The English family, Karen, Paul, Deanna, Diane, Shirley, the Johnson family, Steve, Jay, Ron, Paul, Cam, and their family, and all those we name in our hearts. receive our prayers in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share. Also with you. Peace be with you. Peace, everybody. Peace, 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 and we consider what portion of our own resources we contribute to support our shared ministry here at Our Saviors. God, you have created all that is, and you provide for us in every season. Bless all that we offer, that through these gifts the world will receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. Amen. So be with you. Lift up your voices and your hearts. We lift them to our God. Let us give thanks to the Holy One, our God. In his right to give our thanks, our thanks and our praise. It is indeed right. Our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places. 
places give thanks and praise to you almighty and merciful god through our savior jesus christ you comforted your people with the promise of the redeemer through whom you will also make all things new in the day when christ comes to judge the world in righteousness and so with all the choirs of angels with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven who birthed the cosmos, the one who creates all things and calls them good. We praise you as the one who has sustained your people in hope through every generation. In great love, you invite us in our great need to gather at the table of your son, remembering how in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying this cup is the new covenant, covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As we eat and drink, send your Holy Spirit among us. Bless this meal. Unite our hearts. Wake us up. Renew us for living out your justice, peace, and love. Amen. I now invite you to mute yourselves and also change to gallery view if you haven't yet, as we join together in the words that Jesus taught us to pray. So joining with the people of God throughout the ages, let us pray with confidence. Our mother, Mother, our our father in heaven, hallowed hallowed be your your name. name. Your Your kingdom come, your will will be done on earth earth as in heaven. heaven. Give Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins sins as we we forgive forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and glory are yours now and forever. Friends, even as we watch and wait, Christ is here. Come, eat and drink. And as you do, hear these words addressed to each one of you and to us together. The body of Christ given for you. And the blood of Christ shed for you. Blood of Christ shed for you. I didn't see her. Christ broken for you. Amen.
body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and abundant God, you have done great things for us, and we rejoice. In this bread and cup, you give us life forever. In your boundless mercy, strengthen us and open our hearts to the world's needs. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. to serve and do justice. Before we go, we've got some announcements. Woohoo! And you all have been peeking a little at our Advent environment here at Our Saviors, and I want to say a few words about that. You can see behind me here this beautiful blue quilted cross, and that comes to us from Catherine Preuss. It's a gift from her, and it's from Nigeria. It was made by a group called Women of Hope in Nigeria. And then I'm gonna turn my screen in just a second so you can get a glimpse of our fabulous painted windows. Maggie Wells and Sonia Batalden were here yesterday painting an Advent message of hope for all of the world to see. And really you all need to drive by so you can see it rightly, but I'll give you a little peek here. There it is. And you can see too, there is a little advent wreath there too with a battery lit candles there for our neighbors to see as well. So tonight we have Advent Pajama Vespers that's aimed at um, young children and their families. So we hope that you can join Pastor Lori and myself and Liz for that. Um, 6.30 on Zoom and the link is in the weekly update that you received. And then on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. On Wednesday night at 7 p.m. we have Advent evening prayer also on Zoom. And each week we will welcome a different member to share a reflection about our Advent theme of God with us and what that means in their lives. So we hope that you can join us on those evenings for scripture, song, prayer, and hearing that reflection. Are there any other announcements from any, any others of you that we should all hear? Oh, one more. Last week was Commitment Sunday. And thank you to all of you who drove over and gave your pledge cards. If you haven't yet, if you forgot or just didn't get to it, it is not too late. You can mail it on in or you can contact Nancy Nygaard Johnson, our financial secretary, and she can fill out a card for you. Also, our auction finished up on Monday, and it was a wild success. So thank you to everybody who was part of the auction. Yay, we raised $10,000. And a big, big shout out, especially to Suzanne, who just marvelously orchestrated the whole thing. So thank you, Suzanne. Truly a work of love. And... I think that's all our announcements for today. We go forth with God's blessing. 
The creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting. The long expected savior, fill you with love. The unexpected spirit, guide your journey. Now and forever. Amen. to God. And stick around for coffee hour. I love to watch Jane dancing with Eli. <laughs> Can't wait till I can dance with Eli. Good morning, Harvey. When did you get that haircut? A couple days ago. It looks great, but I almost didn't recognize you. Wow. And there's, um, there's, um, shoes for older kids and one pair, two pairs fit me. Good, good for you. You are getting to be a big boy. And 11 and 12 are the, um, shoe sizes. That's Harvey there. That is certainly Harvey. <laughs> oh, I miss you guys. 
The ruined gym. How did the move go yesterday or Friday? I'm not sure. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. I can remember if I took it off. Yeah, we're still alive. <laughs> and still speaking to each other. They were long ones. <laughs> Well, good. Glad you made it. It made it over there. Yeah, and it was sun two sunny days, so that was good. So, Lou Rue, <coughs> yeah, Where are you now? What We're in Wayzata. Oh, <coughs> I like your haircut, Lou Yeah, it's a little shorter, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, very nice. She yeah. had more time, I think. So. I could tell. She's taking a lot more time. I bet I have less hair. <laughs> Which end of Wyzetta Boulevard are you? The one closer to Minneapolis or closer to? Yeah. We're not on Wyzetta Boulevard. We're on Promenade, which is just a short couple blocks, I think. So you go off of Central. And then we're just at the end of downtown area, kind of. Yeah. 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 OK. Sure. And then Angular where, where the shopping center yeah. used to be. Okay. Is the library open? I haven't gotten up there. We've just been here two days, so. <laughs> oh, right. Come on, come on, but I, <laughs> I think I saw the hours posted, so they're they're closed two days, just like the yeah, one. Yeah, and it's probably grab and go. 